What's up everyone? Eric with Ham Radio Concepts with a part 2 follow up to the Cushcraft 13B2 antenna that I had previously made a video on. And this video might teach you a thing or two about polarization on VHF and UHF. And what I'm going to do is just show you the differences uh, of the different polarization and, and one of the problems that I'm having with this antenna, the way I oriented it. Now, to give you a summary, this is a Kush Kushcraft 13B2, 13 element, wideband Yagi, they call it the boomer. This thing uh, is acceptable to use from 144 sideband all the way up to 148, the top end of FM. Now, I have this mounted with a ham 4 rotor with the heavy duty mast mount kit that I got from MFJ uh, and that allows me to, ha to put this rotor on a mast or a push-up pole and the rotor wire goes down but I also uh, have uh, this is like a 30 foot or 40 foot push-up pole that I don't have nearly as high as I can go with it um, so I did this because number one there's the where's the power lines at there's power lines right there Alright, so I don't want this thing to be too high and fall into those power lines. That's happened before with that tower over there, and that's why I don't have that up anymore. <clears throat> so, typically when you're using a Yagi like this, okay, um, typically when you're using FM, we're talking about two meters only, okay? FM simplex or FM repeater work typically is vertically polarized, meaning the antennas on the repeaters are vertical. The stations operating into the repeaters are vertical. The stations operating simplex without a repeater are vertical. Um, this antenna can be horizontally mounted or vertically mounted. And horizontal you'd be using for two meter sideband. Which it, and originally that's what my intention what this antenna is. But two meter sideband activity right now is not the best so uh, I flipped it hor uh, vertically. Now the when I'm vertical on FM can I use this on sideband? Well, you could, but now think of everybody on sideband is going to be horizontally polarized, and you'll be vertical. So it's got to match on both ends pretty much. You want to, if everybody's vertical, you got to be vertical. Uh, again, for those who want to comment and say that's false, well, I did have this horizontal and talked to some guys that are 20, 30 miles north of me on simplex on FM horizontal. The only problem is my station, my signal wasn't as great uh, as it could be and I can only hear half the stations that I can normally hear because they're farther out, not as high, and they're vertically polarized and I was horizontally polarized. Polarized. So therefore some guys were saying, well I can't really hear you Eric, and the other ones are saying, well I can hear you but just not well. Once I flipped this thing vertically, I came booming in. Except to the guy that's horizontal up there. Now he keeps his horizontal for sideband work, but lately he hasn't been on sideband, so he's listening on FM and he's closer to those guys up there. So now he wasn't hearing me, but everybody else was. So the important thing to know is if you're side if you're working sideband or CW on two meters, typically you want to be horizontally polarized. That would be with the elements turned uh, 90 degrees from this, so they'd be horizontal. Right, and FM for vertical. Now the problem I'm having when I had this horizontal, the SWR was was flat all the way across. I mean it was awesome. And with that Messi and Poloni coax that I put up there, that stuff's ultra low loss. So, man, I was giving out every bit of signal that I was putting into it. Um, but when I turned it vertical, look what happens now. Okay, I have the rotor with a mast, metal mast, steel pipe going right up in the middle and what that's now doing is turning it into a parasitic element or it's radiating it's distorting the pattern because your signal comes from the director where that matchbox is and it's going this way right out the front to the director and what's in the middle of that is that mast and that mast is distorting the pattern it's uh, throwing off my SWR as well as the coax from that matchbox I've read people say don't route it down the beam and then down the mast so what I'm doing now is I'm making this antenna inefficient and what I want to do is I want to show we're going to leave it we're going to leave it like this and go in the shack show the SWR. I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to flip this horizontal and I'm going to show the SWR again. But then I'm going to change that metal mast there to a fiberglass section of antenna mast, a military grade fiberglass pole from the rotor up 
and then I'm going to flip it back vertical and see the difference on what it did and maybe get a signal report with the guys before and after. Uh, but using this antenna can be used for both modes and you can leave it vertical and maybe occasionally work a good sideband contact when the band opens. But if you're keeping it for FM work, you want to keep it vertical. And if you're keeping it for sideman work, you want to keep it horizontal. Now there has been some people that did say they kept this at a 45 degree angle. That's interesting. I'd like to try that theory. You'd kind of get half horizontal, half vertical, but what would it really gain? I mean, would it really be that good? So maybe that's something to test in the future. So let's go ahead inside the shack and test out what my SWR looks like right now. Now you remember, if you saw in part one, when it was on the tripod in the front yard, that thing was flat. Let's go take a look what it's doing right now with that mass in the middle. All right, so with it vertical like this, all right, um, I'm gonna sweep from 144 to 148. Now, uh, again, if you're using this for uh, FM, you're, you're gonna use it up in the FM portion while it's vertical. So I'm gonna look at, starting at the, the sideband portion, almost 144.2, all right, it's 1.8 to one. Outside, when I had it on the ground in video one, it was uh, flat, all right? So we're gonna scroll up here and you'll see the SWR up here, up into the FM portion. Look at it going up, two, 2.7 to one. I'm talking about using it 14652, 14655. It's already 2.7 to 1. Um, and if I go up even higher in the higher FM portion up here, you want to use it for a repeater up here, 3.3 .3 to 1. That's that's due to that mast being right in line with that uh, antenna, uh, acting as a parasitic element or, a, you know, distorting the pattern, distorting the radiation. And at the same time, when I transmit, specifically with the amp on and I have this thing vertical with that it's coming straight down that mast into my computer speakers and the computer speakers go nuts um, on VHF and they never did that uh, when it was horizontal or with my vertical so it's definitely causing an issue uh, yeah you could get away I mean you could use 3.3 to 1 or even I mean it's not really the best but it's 2.7 2.6 to 1 that's you know, you're losing a few watts, but at VHF, you got to factor in, you're using, you're losing a lot of uh, power if you don't have good coax. Um, you don't want to use RG8, uh, RG58, or uh, RG8X minimum on VHF. Um, that's why I, I, I really favor that Messi and Poloni, because of the attenuation at 100 feet at 144 megahertz is only 1.4 dB. Now you consider I'm using 30 feet, that's just over a quarter of that, so less than a half of 1.4 would be 0 0.7. So I mean, you're talking not a lot of loss, whereas when you compare that on a coax chart, uh, something like RG8X where you have 2 point something dB uh, per 100 feet, and then you throw in a high SWR like this, you're, you're really not, you're better off with a vertical than having a 13 element beam out there. So that's why I'm concerned for those who say, well, I've been running a 2.5 SWR for a long time and never had an issue. Okay, well, if I'm gonna have a beam like this with that much gain, I, I wanna get every bit of gain out of it, you know? Um, so when I flip that horizontal, I'll go up there and flip it horizontal, and then we're gonna run the same test from 144. Uh, whatever, dot two. We're gonna run that all the way up to the FM and we're gonna see just how the SWR changes with flipping the orientation where that mast, that steel pipe, is not vertical right up into that beam like it is now and then we'll see what it does. Then after that point, we'll switch it out for a fiberglass mast and put it back to the vertical. All right, so I figured it'd be a good time to fire up the old uh, Radio Shack HTX212. It's been sitting here for a while. I thought about selling it, and then uh, <laughs> I got the ICOM down here underneath it. I haven't used these in a while, so we're going to fire this up here. And I'm going to ask for John real quick on Simplex and see if he can give me a signal report to, conf to go against. Uh, KF4PFI from KJ4YZI. Hey John, um, making a couple segments of video here, and what I'm trying to figure out, uh, I think this would be a, a decent test point. I'm trying to figure out um, 
this metal mast up in the middle of this vertical beam and switching it out to a fiberglass one. Um, right now, tell me if you're on the Yagi or the Omni and if you're facing away from me and I'm going to look at your signal and kind of get an idea of uh, what you're doing here before I end up changing anything. Go ahead. Right, yeah, okay, so you're facing away from me, and on the back side of your beam, I'm getting you at like um, nine, S9 on my little chiclet scale, S9, and then uh, I'm, and you're getting an S6 from me on the back side of your beam, kiss up. Yeah, Roger. All right, half scale. Yeah, well, I understand the whole S meter discrepancy with uh, chiclets that are lighting up on a digital LCD screen. I get that. All right, so now it's horizontal again. And even horizontal with that metal mast, it does well because the mast is not in line with the antenna causing an issue. Now, the SWR on this meter looks similar to what I saw outside in the first video when I put this together. 144. Uh, it's 1.2 to 1, and if I scroll up, uh, like sideband here would be 1.2 to 1, and then we'll go up toward FM, 1 1.2, 1.2, 1.3, so 14655, 14652 right there, it's still 1.2, um, but it's, of course, horizontal, so, um, go up here a little bit higher remember up in the higher end it was uh when it was vertical it was really high it was like 3.5 3.6 up here all the way at the very top all right so it does pretty good horizontal that's how the antenna really was designed i think uh kj4yzi back here uh on video uh let's uh let's see n4 pvc there Okay, that's that's phenomenal. Um, real quick, John, what do you let me uh, uh, let me hear you, John? S9 before. you're down. Last time with the Yagi facing away, I think you were like S9 or S7, S9. Now you're like a, on my little digital chiclet meter S3 flashing at S5 and uh, frying some bacon. Uh, Dave, uh, what are you using? Okay, uh, N4 PBC. This is a uh, 18 element uh, Yagi uh, horizontally polarized up about 65 feet. And if you want, I can come back with the uh, vertical. Alright, so I am horizontal now. That was horizontal. So, um, Okay, so right now, horizontal, you are full scale, full quiet. 
Um, switch over to vertical and we'll see what you sound like. I can't even hear him vertical. Yeah, switch switch back, Dave. I I can't even barely hear you. Okay, and this is back to the beam. Yeah, big improvement. Uh, horizontal to horizontal, full scale, full quiet. Um, my horizontal to your vertical. Uh, I mean, I, I can't even hear. What what was my received signal on your end? I really wasn't copying you. I heard you in there, but I couldn't make you out. Oh, and right now, um, this whole time, I've been running 100 watts. And just for a comparison, I'll drop power. That's 5 watts there. See if I'm still uh, upwards of the full scale or not. Uh, N4 PPC. Yeah, full scale on 5 watts. Uh, the 100 to 5, I could hear a slight... You know, I mean, ever so slight um, hash in the background, but I mean, it's full scale, full quiet. So, uh, if you wouldn't have done that while you were keyed up, I would have never known you dropped the power. Wow, that's amazing. Horizontal to vertical, you see the difference. Um, well, the uh, 18 elements, uh, horizontal to horizontal, works well. Um, that's a relatively big uh, beam I have here. Um, <laughs> I have to say I'm pretty proud of it. It's uh, about 36 feet long. Wow, that's uh, that's over twice the size of mine. Okay, switched it back to vertical without the metal mast. Fiberglass section holding the antenna up, and I'll show you a video of that outside. Uh, along with moving that coax so it's not running down the boom. And after this, we'll get some signal reports. Uh, talk to the guys up north, but look at this now. Sideband portion. 2.0 and as I go up to FM it comes down but it's 1 140 okay so 147 147 900 it's 1.2 1.3 um, and down here around 14652 14655 1.5, 1.6 to 1. Now, there is probably some fluctuation also with the coax and the added loss of the coax now. But look, just look how much of a change it made. And not only are you focusing on a 1.5 to 1 SWR, but the radiation pattern, the focus, uh, the, the beam pattern, the rejection, the side rejection, the front to back ratio, all that changes when you, when you change that mast out to something that's non-conductive. So that's that's the most important uh, having an antenna that's one to one SWR doesn't mean as much if it's just all over the place and it's supposed to be directional right so let's see now what the signal reports show real time and in between this I made clips of when I had it horizontal and I was talking to the guys and I had it vertical and so I've been outside I hope you appreciate this video because it the wife almost wanted to kill me going inside and outside up and down on the ladder back and forth raise the pole lower the pole honey hold this honey does this look straight so let's get some uh, real time uh, real time test here Yeah, it's blinking on the last segment at plus 20. Yeah, I switched radios because uh, this is the 736R satellite rig, and uh, it's got a uh, variable power control. It, it, I can really, really low see so I can, I can feel the wave and the signal and the beam. Uh, it's very good. Yeah, 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 it's Oh, that's amazing. S7 at half a watt. Uh, what do I sound like that way? Uh, you're 60 over, full scale. Yeah, that mast uh, definitely did a number. Um, take My SWR now is about a 1.2, 1.3 right here. Um, John, you're full scale. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, Steve, are you in there? I am in here. Good evening. 
Was that Ed? <laughs> yeah, I've been listening to you guys for a while. It's like like a <clears throat> Laurel and Hardy movie. Don't worry. Well, good evening, Ed. Good evening, Eric. Yeah, it's nice. We can hear you up here now. We don't have to turn the squelches down and all kinds of weird stuff. Okay, Ed, so what is that doing at 35 watts up your way? You're full scale down here. I don't know, uh, I'm on an HT at the moment, but uh, you're real strong. I mean, I'm sure you're full. You're full For those scale. wondering, he's cross banding. He's not using an HT 30 miles away. He's cross banding from his HT to his uh, desktop rig. Okay, very good. Very good. Well, uh, I got about a, another foot and a half of height today, and uh, with the modifications and all that, I don't think there's really anything more I can do on this thing. Besides flip it horizontal if I wanted to work at sideband. Uh, other than that, I think I'm pretty satisfied with what it's doing uh, vertical on FM. Alright, so here's kind of what it looks like real quick before the little no CMs eat me up. So, vertical. The coax is not routing down the boom. That's the best I could figure out. I'm concerned about the weight hanging off of that uh, matchbox like that, but again, it's not in the beam pattern there. Um, to zoom in, you'll see I attached the fiberglass mast there, and don't ask me how I did it. It's a little bit of creativity and ingenuity. Um, but see the, the metal mast now is holding it, and the metal mast goes up a couple inches, a few inches inside the fiberglass mast, so it is secure. I mean, it ain't going nowhere. Um, so now it's fiberglass. So now that's non-conductive in the middle of that beam pattern. Just for the heck of it. Let's see if I can zoom in and see where my tower had hit the power line. Look at this. See that right there? That's hard to focus. That right there is where my tower had once hit the power line. That's why I don't recommend, uh, I'd be very careful when you're putting these things up that you're not in close proximity. This may look like I'm close to it, the way it's oriented, but uh, it's not going to fall under there. Well, guys, it has been a pleasure to test this antenna with Eric. Stay subscribed and stay tuned. 73s from KF4PFI. And KJ4YZI, 7-3, guys.